Hey, you know, I'm not old enough to remember the <laughs> Oilers receivers, but for the Titans, the list isn't that impressive. I got to put Derrick Mason over. I remember Derrick Mason when I first came into the league. I would say he's the best Titans receiver of all time. Maybe if AJ stayed there for a couple more years, he was a very, very good player for the Titans. They kind of had a high school offense. You either handed it to 22 or you threw it to 11 when you're throwing the ball. And he carried that weight on the shoulder. I think he'll do great in Philly, but I can't quite crown him as the best Titans receiver, but love the confidence and love even more the back and forth spats on Twitter. I, I love athletes and fans getting into it on Twitter. That's one of my favorite pastimes these days. <laughs> oh, AJ, 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 AJ. Why? Why? Why do that? Why antagonize that fan base who embraced you and they liked you? And by all accounts, they saw you as humble, not even necessary to get into this with another fan. Uh, he had also had canceled that youth camp in Tennessee. And then when the trade was happening, he said, I had nothing to do with it. I had nothing to do with it. And then there were reports that were contrary to that. Uh, he is a great talent. He obviously was impactful there, but when it comes to him and how he compares to other Titans receivers, he hasn't been there long enough. Obviously, he made his impact known when he was hurt this past season, and then he came back, had that huge game right there against the 49ers. His talent is undeniable. And with the Titans, again, there was so much goodwill. I just think that everyone needs to move on. Darius, I hear you. In this day and age where athletes are able to go back and forth with fans, why not? It makes it fun. It gives us some content. It just feels like, okay, you're now in Philadelphia. Let's, let's move on now. Now let's talk about Jalen Hurts and Devontae Smith. That's where the focus should be on, not about what some random person on Twitter oh, said. God, well, That's just something beat, beat that you need Titans to get fans. into. I just... You know, I don't know. Yep. Just, beat up on Titans. I think he's better. If we're, <laughs> if we're going back to Oilers sure. history, Ernest Givens and Haywood Jeffries would be two names that people who weren't growing up on 80s and 90s NFL like I was might want to go back and watch because they were fun. It was a wide open offense, great touchdown celebrations. But in terms of the Titans, A.J. Brown has been one of the defining players. Everyone talks about Derrick Henry as being a part of that team. But what A.J. Brown also brings in terms of that physical presence as somebody who's covered them live on a number of occasions, you can feel it when you're in the stadium. You can see the impact that's making on players in the defensive backfields that they're facing. You go back through A.J. Brown's numbers over the past three years since he's been in the league. 17th in the NFL in yards. He is 10th in the NFL in receiving touchdowns despite the fact that he is 30th in targets. Cole Beasley's been targeted more. Robbie Anderson's been targeted more. Tyler Boyd has been targeted more than A.J. Brown because the Titans want to run the football. They want to play good defense. They throw the ball when they need to. Now he goes to an offense in Philadelphia where you would certainly expect between him and Devontae Smith, they're not going to be afraid to open things up. He may get more opportunities. As long as his body holds up, the knee that's really limited his practice time, as long as that holds up, there's no reason to think that we're not going to see the best version of A.J. Brown in 2022 in Philly. Well, listen, if somebody comes out and says they've been on a team three years and they're the greatest receiver in that franchise's history, that is a take. That, that, is, that is the heat wave, blow your hair off. And yet, is he wrong? Let's just stop for a second and say, like, I actually do no. think he might have a leg to stand on. Now, I don't know about greatest, and we were pulling up Derek Mason, who I always love, about statistics year after year. But like Tom mentioned it, let's just look at the Oilers and the and the Titans. And like, this isn't exactly like a list of legends. You got to go back to the 80s. We have a gentleman on there from the 60s. Those are the receiving record leaders. 592, 795. All right. So more importantly, though, has any, you ever seen anybody, never mind greatness and stature and, and longevity, have you ever seen a better wide receiver, just game to game, week to week, more talented, more explosive on the Titans or Oilers than A.J. Brown? I, I don't know if you have. I actually think it's a really funny take that he went there and might actually be right. A.J. Brown was also on the field for playoff games that ended the Tom Brady era in New England and for a win for the Titans, that ended the Lamar Jackson MVP season in Baltimore and a win for the Titans. A.J. Brown is incredible. He didn't have the longevity that those guys did. He didn't have the consistency year after year that Derek Mason did. But I'm also like scanning the NFL right now to see, are there any current players on a team 
who are the best wide receiver in that franchise's history, ever. And I'm thinking Mike Evans might have something to say about that. I think he dwarfs everybody else with Tampa statistically, for sure. But AJ, like, say what you want about going back and forth with fans. I think he might have a leg to stand on. I like those guys who came before him, but, like, I don't think their ceiling was as high. Will... I have never heard a, a take. You are usually so fun and so creative. And I feel like my dad was on here talking about him going back and forth with fans. In fact, my dad is really fun. Will, why are you so yelling at clouds about this thing? I don't recognize you. No, nah, just the thing is, it's like, I, I, I don't know. I just think that they can just get over it. I, I just think going back and forth with various Titans fans, when he left his mark in the community, he left his mark there as, as a teammate, he left his mark there yeah. as a player. I mean, he was a singular talent. I just think that he did yeah. a, a lot of good for that community. And it's just, I, I don't know. I mean, I guess for all of us, when we're on social media, it's, it's we, we need to have thick skin, right? But it's always that one, that one that maybe has an egg avatar that has two followers and were like, boy, that really got to me that one day. And I feel like that was the egg avatar that got to him. You know, because he is saying the right things to the Philadelphia fan base now and about his teammates, Kyle. All right, well, Darius, you, you mentioned, you said this is one of your favorite things. Now, you're an ex-player. You understand the fans and social media and whatnot. Let's play it forward. We're mentioning Tom and Will, Philadelphia. Here he enters Philadelphia, different type of media. Than, than Tennessee, different type of division in terms of exposure and everything. What do you think his fit's going to be like? Never mind on the field. We, we've talked a lot about that. Culture-wise, Philly, media, teammates, locker room, because AJ, he's a good guy, but he gets a little loose sometimes. What do you think? How does this work out? Hey, I think, it, I think it's going to be awesome. He's in Philly, obviously a, a crazy fan base, going to get a lot more attention being out there. Playing alongside Devontae Smith, Jalen Hurts, like you said, not on the field, even off the field. He's used to the attention. He played in the SEC, the second-round pick, and now he's one of the highest-paid receivers in the league. I think A.J. Brown will be just fine out there. I think, I think Philly fans are definitely going to love him because he plays – with that dog mentality. He's a dog. That's what Nick Sirianni is always talking about. We need a dog, as Ty Schmidt would say. Yeah, but, yeah. yes, he is that 100% every Sunday he shows up. So I'm excited for him in Philly on and off the field. Yeah, he's already said that Devontae Smith should be a wide receiver one. So he's already being effusive in his praise of not only Devontae Smith, but also of Jalen Hurts, who's his quarterback. Look, the Eagles needed a big-bodied receiver like him last season. Just look back at that game where they lost to the Bucks. He is, as I mentioned, a singular talent, and Tom outlined it. He is going to fit perfectly. He is going to have a great season there, and I think he's going to have more good times than bad times there. And he knows he's entering into the lion's den when it comes to Philadelphia and the criticism that he would be inviting. So what I think is, I think he's going to play his best ball, and I don't think there's going to be many people going after him. Clearly, if there is somebody going after him, he's going to do it. But I think he's going to make an impact there in Philadelphia right away, where I think it's going to negate any sort of criticism. I think sometimes we lose tone coming off of tweets. And A.J. Brown is responding to that fan who was saying, for the love of God, stay off social media after A.J. Brown posted this. Now, this is a fairly hot take here that he had on Twitter. Today, I learned that the percentage on the weather doesn't mean it's the percent of a chance it's going to rain, etc. It means it's the percent of the city is the amount it's going to get hit with rain, etc. Meaning like 50% rains means that's how much of the city it will rain in. Brown then followed up and said, if it's wrong, blame my girlfriend. I just be listening to her sometimes. LOL. First of all, quick meteorological <laughs> lesson, of course. The percentage is actually f by this formula here, which is the confidence that the weather people have that it's going to rain times the area equals the probability of precipitation. For instance, if they're 70% confident that it's going to rain in the area and it's going to rain in 50% of the area, that comes out to 35%. So that's what you'll see on your app or your Apple Watch or wherever you might find it. Now that that's out of the way, I love A.J. Brown. Every time we talk after the game, he's insightful. He always has a smile on his face. He's somebody who's going to fit in well, like everybody. Philadelphia can be a difficult place to play, but it's as difficult as you make it. Starting out with the fact that A.J. Brown seems to be, by and large, a pretty fun-loving and honest person, that's going to carry him a long way there.